fourth time literally has to be the charm. This is my fourth time filming this video and I don't think I'll make it through another one. Hello guys, it is that time of the year. Happy 2023, by the way. I should have started out with that. Happy 2023, welcome to 2023. I'm filming this on New Year's Eve, so I'm not quite there yet, but I'm almost there. So happy 2023, hope you had an amazing New Year's. We're gonna be talking about all 180 books that I read this year. So I read around 180 books. I say around because I did a terrible job at tracking my Goodreads this year. This is like a roundabout because these are all of the books. I'm gonna be talking about every single book I read but I don't know the exact number but I know my Goodreads says 179 and I think I read a few more than that but I'm not too sure. We're gonna be talking about them. I'm going to try to go through these super fast. The other three times I filmed this video I went in order and I think that I just am like not going to do that. Well I'm not gonna do that because I separated everything into genres so as you can see if it worked I have chapters down below that you can see when I'm talking about certain books by genre and stuff so that's what we're gonna do today. This is every single book I read. It's not in order though because I was just losing my mind trying to do that for some unbeknownst reason to me. Let's talk about all 180-ish books that I read this year. First of all, I'm going to go through my 2022 stats with you guys. I wish I had kept up with my story graph this year, but I didn't do a good job at that either. No, we don't have any like super intricate details, but we do have what Goodreads has given me for my year in books. So I read 179 books according to Goodreads. I read 68,700 nine pages. I don't know what that does for anybody, but there's that information. My shortest book was Fracture Me, which is a novella, and my longest book was 938 pages, Keeping 13, and I don't remember. I do not recall that book being that long. It definitely didn't feel that long. I'm not too sure, honestly. The average book length for me in 2022 was around 383 pages. Again, I don't know what we're doing this with this information, but you know. And my average rating for 2022 was a 3.2 star, which I feel like is pretty fair. Honestly, I feel like it's pretty fair. So those are all the stats that Goodreads offered me. So that was quick and easy. Now we're just going to talk about the books that I read this year. Let's get into it. I'm literally just going to tell you guys my rating and that's about it. So first of all, I'm going to just talk about the books that I don't have school copies of because it's easier to just get those out of the way and then talk about all the books I have. First of all, we have Full Tilt, which I rated a two stars. I just didn't really like the girl in this one and I felt like the guy was too good for her. And then we have All In, which is the second book in the duet. And I rated this one a two and a half stars. I liked this book a little bit better. I liked the way it ended, but I still wasn't in love with these characters. And then we have A Thousand Boy Kisses. I rated this a three stars. I'm not one to critique writing unless it is in my face so bad grammatically and just everything in it is so bad or if it's like really good they don't notice it listen I decided not to go to college to be an English lit student like I was going to but then I decided against it so I'm not in any position to be critiquing this writing okay I have no right I don't really pay attention to it it was just very in my face that it was more immaturely written which isn't a critique it's just that I feel like this book is marketed towards a younger audience than I am and then we have birthday girl which is a one star when I think back on this book there's not one positive thing I have to say about it. I didn't like any of the characters and this book made me feel a little icky. Then we have Corrupt and I also rated this book one stars. Like, this was when it was like really being talked about on TikTok so I wanted to give it a shot. I just hated the characters, hated the story. There was nothing redeemable about it for me as well as I read Hideaway later on into the year to give it a second shot and I should have just hid from this series because this was also a one star. This book even more than corrupt, I was a little disturbed by. Next is The Sweetest Oblivion. This I read this when it was like having all of the hype on TikTok. I really don't see that many people talk about the Maid series anymore, but people were loving this series at the beginning of the year, so I gave it a shot. This was a two star for me. I just feel like it's a book that has been done so many times before. The Upside of Falling, which I rated a two stars. I read this on like a plane to Florida, so I wanted to like pass time, so I read this book. And it was a super sweet, cute, adorable book, but there's nothing much more to it than that. I haven't thought about this book once since I've read it. Lastly, we have Sinners Anonymous. I read this pretty recently because I've seen some people talk about this and I just didn't really like this book. It was a two stars. There was nothing very special about it for me. There were like little things that I thought were unique, but not much. Those are all of the books that I don't have the copies of. So now is where I'm going to start splitting this video into sections. First of all, we are going to talk about my series that I read this year. So I'm just going to talk about every single series that I read in one go, intermixing the genres just because I wanted to keep the series together. Let's talk about the series that I read this year. First, we're talking about 
the Addicted Calloway Sister series. If you guys have watched my videos before, you guys know that I absolutely love this series. I will talk to you about them in the order that I read them. So first of all, we have the first three Addicted books. We have Addicted to You, which is a three stars. I will say when I first started off with the series, I didn't know if I would even like it because the characters that Lily and Lo are in these first books are completely different to who they are in even the Calloway books and later on into their own books. Like the character development is magnificent. It's absolutely the best character development I have ever seen in a series ever. This one was the three stars. I am going to be rereading this whole entire series in 2023 to fully annotate it and I'm very excited and I'm going to have a newfound appreciation for these books so they probably will be rated higher in 2023 but for now Addicted to You is a three. Ricochet is a three. This one just really focuses on Lily which I like but not as much as like the other books and then we have Addicted for Now which I rated a three and a half stars because this was the first time that we got Lowe's POV and then I hopped over to the Callaway Sister series because these are like all in chronological order so we have Kiss the Sky, which I rated a four star. This is Rosen Connor's book. I really liked it. I think that this storyline was the juiciest, most drama filled one in the whole entire series, and I really liked that. And then we have Hot House Flower. This one also had a lot of drama and a lot of things going on in it, and I also rated this a four star. Then we go back to the Addicted series. We have Thrive, which is a four star. This book basically just recounts everything that happened in Kiss the Sky and Hot House Flower, but from Lily and Lowe's POV. But I really liked that. Some people don't, but I do because there's a lot of important things that happened with Lily and Lowe in those books. I appreciated getting their point of view on it. And then we have Addicted After All, which was a five stars. I absolutely adore this book. It is my favorite book in the Addicted series. And then we go back to the Callaway Sister series to finish this off. So we have Fuel the Fire, which was a four and a half stars. I loved this book. Although I do feel that this book was the most boring and I say that like it wasn't boring but it was the most like non-stuff happening in the series so it was a four and a half though because a lot of maturing was done in this book and I enjoyed seeing that and then we have Long Way Down which was a five stars I loved this book from start to finish it was amazing and I loved the way that this book ended because there is an epilogue novel which is some kind of perfect which I also read this year and gave it five stars I will say that the ending of Long Way Down you don't necessarily even need to pick up some kind of perfect because this just just kind of follows their later years and focuses more on their kids. I feel like this is kind of a startup to the Like Us series. There's also the Like Us series, which I haven't read. It's about their children. So you kind of see more of their children and get to know their kids a little bit more. And I feel like that was done for the purpose of the Like Us series. But this one ends on a great note. So yeah, I also read Some Kind of Perfect, which was a five star for me. I read the Bad Reputation duet. This is actually Whatever It Takes and Wherever You Are. I just have the bind up of the two books. Whatever It Takes was a four and a half for me. Wherever You Are was a four. I really adore those books. I love these characters. These are characters you meet later on into the Addicted Callaway books and they become very prominent characters and especially when you read this you get a lot of the core six in them and you start learning background and all that stuff and I love these books. I thought that these were great character add-on. Okay moving on to the next series. We have the off-campus series well the remainder because I read the deal in 2021 so then I picked up the remaining books in the off-campus series. So we have The Mistake which was a three-star I think John Logan's great, but he's not everything that they make it out to be. And honestly, this book was just a little like uh, to me because of John Logan sporting a crush on somebody. Next, we have The Score, which I was actually excited to read because this and The Deal are like people's top fave of the whole entire series and people love Dean. I didn't like Dean that much before going into this book. So maybe this will change. It didn't. I still didn't like Dean after reading this book. I didn't really like this book that much. There were a few things that I was like, oh yeah, that's cute. It was a three stars. Like this wasn't terrible, but my bone to pick is that these, the deal, the mistake, and the score were so similar where it felt like you were reading these same characters, the same storyline. It was just tweaked a bit, like little bits. They literally felt like reading the same book over and over and over again. But then we got to the goal, which was a strong three stars for me because it still just kind of was lackluster. But I appreciated that L. Kennedy switched up the storyline and I love Tucker. He is my second favorite book boyfriend out of this series after Gary Graham, of course. And then we have The Legacy, which is the epilogue novel to this series. I was scared to go into this because a lot of people were actually complaining about this saying that they didn't like it and that they felt like it ruined the characters. I honestly thought that this was a pretty good end so I gave it a three stars. I read the Summer I Turned Pretty series in preparation for the TV show which I love. I rated the Summer I Turned Pretty a four stars. I said it when I had my reading vlog for this that this just felt like a wave of nostalgia for all of my summers growing up even though they didn't look exactly like this. It just really was very reminiscent of my summer and I loved it so much. It's Not Summer Without You which was a three stars. It just... 
this book was kind of like a filler. I don't feel like a lot happened in this book. Kind of felt a little pointless. And then we have We'll Always Have Summer, which was a two and a half stars because characters start going down the drain for sakes of other characters. It was very slow. Stupid decisions are made. I read the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Shadow and Bone, two and a half stars. It started off strong, then got weaker. And then we have Siege and Storm, which was a two star. This just nothing about this book stood out to me as well as Ruin and Rising. I actually gave this a two stars because I hated the ending of this book. It kind of felt like there was a purpose for the ending, but it also just felt pointless that we spent this whole entire series building up certain things to have it end in that way. But I finally got to read the Six of Crows duology because I was forcing myself to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy before this because so many people were like, you should really read that before. Even though I say you don't have to, just go into these and save yourself the time and effort. This was a strong four star for me. I love Kaz. He is my fave and I love the crows and the storyline in this book is so good and the way this book ends I immediately jumped into Crooked Kingdom and this was a four and a half. Again love the crows. So much more character development starts and like romances start to bloom. The action in this book. It was amazing. I cried as well <laughs> at the ending. <sighs> Binding and keeping 13 and guys I am over the moon because Chloe Walsh announced on her website that Saving Six is coming out on Valentine's Day. I am so excited. It is Joey's book and I love Joey. I cannot wait to read his book. For right now, we're talking about Binding and Keeping 13, which were both five stars. These are some of my favorite books I have ever read. These are like 600 pages, so I don't know where they got the 900 number from. I absolutely adore these books. If you guys are looking for the same feeling of found familyness that the Addicted series gives, please read these because these are absolutely amazing. These take place when they're in high school and I love these from start to finish. I never, I didn't even want these to end because I love them so much. Every single character I would die for personally. I read the Inheritance Game trilogy and I loved it. These were also some of my favorite reads of the year. These are such easy reads. They're such short chapters. The way it's written is super easy and fast to read. It feels like Clue, reading a game of Clue. There's also a love triangle in this series, but you guys know if you watch my videos that I am not a fan of love triangle. This is the only love triangle that I could ever deal with. We have the Inheritance Games, which was a strong four stars for me. And then we have the Hawthorne Legacy, which was a four and a half stars. This is my favorite book in the whole entire trilogy. And then we have the Final Gambit, which I also rated a four and a half stars. I loved the way that this storyline took. I did guess like some of the twists, but... I still loved it anyway. And then we have the Dreamland Billionaires series. This is actually going to be a trilogy, but only two books are out right now. And I read both of them this year. So we have the fine print. This is a strong four and a half. I love the setting of this book because it's basically taking place in what is essentially Disneyland. And the character development of Rowan in this book is so good. He does have the grumpy personality of the grumpy sunshine. I don't feel like he loses it all the way, but he does have great character development. Terms and conditions, which I rated a four stars because I did like this book. However, However, I did feel like these two books were way too similar, especially for them to be in the same series. All of the guys in the trilogy are brothers and Declan and Rowan were way too similar of characters for me because they both, it's basically kind of both grumpy sunshine type of thing going on. Declan is so dry and just so mean where his personality just wasn't there at all. Like there was no personality there for me. It felt just blah, like whenever it was around him and I felt like Iris was way too good for him personally. I still liked the book. Like you may be like, okay, so you didn't like it. I did, but my critique is that these two were way too similar. And if I were to pick one, it would be the fine print by far. I also read the Dirty Air series this year by Lauren Asher, an F1 racing series. They have throttled. I love Maya in this book. She is an influencer. I actually really like the way that Lauren Asher depicted her as an influencer because I feel like so many times when authors depict influencers, they go for that kind of snobby, whatever. That's how a lot of them are written. I don't really like that that much. I liked how her character was written also. This was a four star by the way. I loved that Noah went to therapy for himself. I loved the representation of men going to therapy and I loved that he got better for himself in the betterment of his relationship because he wanted to. Then we have Collided which I rated a two and a half because this follows Sophie and Sophie is Maya's best friend and a lot of this book just felt repetitive because we saw a lot of these scenes already in Throttled. It just felt like we got Sophie's point of view but like they weren't anything extravagant that I wanted her POV anyway. And then we have Wrecked, which I rated a three stars. I didn't really ever like Jax's character, like outside of this book. And this was his book. And I just kind of felt like he was a jerk. There wasn't anything redeemable about his personality for me, but I did enjoy this book and his journey to some of his self-reflection. Then we have my favorite book of the series. This 
redeemed which I rated it four and a half stars I love Santi in all of the books and there's something that happened in the beginning that completely takes me off guard but I love the way that this story went and I loved Santi and Chloe and then we have my favorite books of the year books that have changed my life and that is the Agatar series we know okay you guys are probably like destiny we don't need to hear another thing come out of your mouth about this series I know. Charlie, really? Don't knock these books down, babe. Don't knock them down. Don't you dare. Akatar, four and a half stars. I really loved this book. I loved the last like 150 pages of this. I, I couldn't stop reading. I couldn't, which is a common theme for the rest of the books because then I picked up Akamoff, which I actually have a video for Akatar. And I was going to make a video for every single other book in this series, but guess what happened? I started making a reading vlog for Akama and then I just got to the point where I was reading this book and I was literally just in that mode. I didn't want to pick up a camera and talk to it because I was just so in it. I was so in it. I was literally like, no one speak to me. I don't want to talk to anybody. I have things to do. And today this is it. This is all I'm reading. This was a five stars. I loved this book so much. We have Akawar, same thing, five stars. Didn't make a reading vlog for this either because as soon as I finished this, I stayed up to finish this. Then I picked this up the next day and stayed up to like 5 a.m. reading it. I freaking uh, loved it. Loved it. Five stars. I'm usually not a fan of just strictly like politics and stuff and fantasy, but this one, because I love the character so much, I was so into it. I was like, okay, wait, let me know more about what is going on with this. And then you have the novella, A Court of Frost and Starlight, which I rated a three stars because I didn't love this one as much because it is from Feyre's point of view, but I do feel that it focused more on the other characters because I don't think that we will be getting another book from Feyre's point of view, unfortunately. I'm heartbroken about that. I think that this was really setting up for everybody else's book and to get an insight on all of the other characters. This just takes place on Winter Solstice and it's a cute read three stars an unexpected five stars was a court of silver flames because the character that this book is about i never really liked every time she was in anything i was like annoyed and i actually did have a hard time getting through the first hundred ish 200 ish pages of this book because she was so insufferable to me but then i learned to love her the character development in this book i was sobbing at the end i read this in one of my 24-hour readathons i was sobbing by the end of this book oh my god the character development was so good and it warmed my heart so yes we love we love akatar so i read the shatter me series which i don't know what order this goes in so if this is wrong i'm sorry shatter me which I picked up and I was really disappointed by this. I gave this a two and a half stars because a lot of people, and this is the same thing with the Cruel Prince trilogy where a lot of people talk about this book like it's very hard to escape this book and spoiler so they talk about a certain character a lot okay when you read this book you don't see much of him and the stuff that you do i was confused i was like okay i don't get where we're going i actually find the love interest in this book annoying and i don't know what's going on so i gave it a two and a half stars and honestly i wasn't even going to continue on with this series but then you guys were like destiny please please just continue on so then i picked up the novella which i'm pretty sure first one is destroy me which is from warner's pov which i loved i actually give that one a three stars because you learn a lot more about him and then you go in to unravel me which i rated a two and a half stars because adam was insufferable in this book and ruined this book for me and the same thing where i was like what is going on is this what everyone's talking about because there's also a huge spoiler for the series that i had seen posted so many times and i was very confused on <laughs> So guys, this is my bone to pick with TikTok. Can we please stop recommending books and putting the spoiler for the whole entire book as a recommendation? Please, and thank you so much. This was a two and a half because I was very confused and then I went back and read Fracture Me, which I'm pretty sure I rated a one star because if I'm not wrong, it is from Adam's POV and I hated that. And then we have Ignite Me, which I rated a three stars, I'm pretty sure, because this one was a little bit better. Here's my bone to pick with the rest of this series is that the book starts off super strong there's a lot going on the middle of this book so slow super repetitive and then the end speeds up so then you go into the next book and you're like oh wow so much is happening but then the cycle starts over again restore me i rated this one at three stars as well this one was actually pretty enjoyable i was enjoying my time reading it and then we have defy me and imagine me imagine me was at three and a half stars i really loved the way that this book ended also warner 
is the like redeeming saving grace of this series for me like anytime he is on the page i am paying attention but we have defy me so it goes defy me imagine me defy me was a three stars imagine me was a three and a half let me tell you this we could have merged these two books together made it 200 pages shorter and i would have rated it like a four and a half and then we have the twisted series so first of all we have twisted love which i rated a three stars alex is very toxic in this book and i don't really like to read toxic traits romanticized and i felt like that's kind of the vibe i was getting he did do some good groveling though so we'll applaud him on that and then we have twisted games this was a four stars my favorite book out of the whole entire series i loved the couple in this book and i loved the storyline and then we have twisted hate one of my more disappointing reads i was really looking forward to this one it was a three stars i just didn't believe in the chemistry of this couple and also there's a specific thing that happens in this book that was irredeemable for me i never looked back after that happened and then we have twisted lies which is actually a strong three stars for me i I was a little disappointed i expected more but i still did really enjoy this couple and enjoyed the book these are just so pretty too like on your bookshelf they're gorgeous i also read the selection series which as a whole i'm giving two stars i just i didn't really like it and then i have the last two books in the good girl's guide to murder trilogy a good girl bad blood i rated it four stars i love pip and robbie and i really enjoyed the storyline of this book as good as dead four and a half but i've said that the ending kind of caught me off guard and i didn't love the ending i feel like if we would have went another direction i would have absolutely adored this book from start to finish but the ending cut off a half a star for me finishing off the series i read the winter in paradise trilogy i would so recommend this to you guys if you guys are going on a beach vacation at all in 2023 or just period i would really recommend these they're very short and easy reads there's a lot of drama in them keeps your attention multiple povs it's told from the third person but i absolutely adore these they take place on the island of saint john and they're great those are all of the series that i read this year you'll see some more like duologies and stuff sprinkled in with like romances but i just didn't include them in the series because either i haven't finished this series or it was just a duology so we just left them where they were i thought that i was getting through that fast but then i just realized how many more books there are to talk about so we're gonna have to speed this up first of all let's talk about my just fiction book the books that i'm putting in the fiction genre i'm not too sure on their genre i don't feel like they belong in any type of thing fiction first of all we're gonna start off with my nonfiction. i only read two nonfiction reads this year which i want to read more nonfiction books in 2023 we have everything i know about love by dolly alderton this book took the world by storm this year i don't rate nonfiction books either i just don't really feel right putting a rating on somebody talking about their life i never have and I never will but I didn't love this book as much as everyone else did as well as all about love I didn't really like this book either I feel like there were like some points that I agreed with but a lot of the book just fell very flat for me and I was bored I checked out after a certain point okay let's talk about the fiction books so we have Mary Jane I really love this book it was a three stars a strong three at that it takes place in the 70s and I love the atmosphere and the story I loved the coming of age vibe of this book. Then we have After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I gave this book a three stars. I feel like there are very important notes about marriage in here a lot. With Taylor Jenkins Reid's backlist, specifically these three books, I feel that they are... There's a book missing. Hold on. There is a book missing. I also read Forever Interrupted, but I don't know where that book went. <laughs> With these books, I feel like these are majorly taken to have lessons derived from them, and I really like that. So this one was a three stars, and we have Maybe in Another Life, which I just thought had a very interesting plot point, and was a three stars. It was an entertaining read. Then we have One True Love, which is such a strong four star for me. I adored this book. There are so many quotes that I just find myself coming back to, literally walking over to my bookshelf and opening them, specifically this quote that I read so much. Falling out of love with someone you still like feels exactly like lying in a warm bed and hearing the alarm clock. No matter how good you feel right right now you know it's time to go we are two people who are madly in love with our old selves and that is not the same as being in love next we have bunny by mona awad i give this book a two stars because it did catch me off guard in a lot of ways but the thing about this is that this book made me feel in a very dark headspace after i read it which is not something that i can do i struggle with mental health this is not a mindset that i can be put into so that was a two star then we have wilder girls one star didn't like this book the fixer upper two stars this was marketed as a romance romance has very little to do with this book in 27 days a book that i loved on wattpad didn't love so much after rereading it it is a three stars i feel like a lot of teenagers i would recommend this book to a lot of teenagers the messy lives of book people one star this book was incredibly boring then we have the unraveling of cassidy holmes two stars there were some pretty interesting points in this book and it's about like a teen pop star band which i thought was fun 
but it kind of seemed like it was trying too hard to be Daisy Jones in the six for me. And nothing is coming close to that. And then we have Blackout. This is just a short story collection. I need to read more short story collections in 2023, but not all in one go. I feel like short story collections for me need to be like touch and go where you like read some of them, then put the book down, then pick it back up. This was a three star though. It takes place in New York during a blackout and I thought that it was really cute. Next, I'm going to be talking about all of the thrillers that I read this year, which were not a lot. I didn't read a lot of thrillers this year. First off, we're starting very strong with Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This was actually a five-star read for me this year. Could not guess the plot twist for life of me, and I loved the writing. All of the chapters kind of end on a plot twist, and you're always wanting to keep on going with the book. How to Survive Your Murder, three stars. I picked this up because it talked about Sydney Prescott in the synopsis. If you like slasher films, you will like this. Lock Every Door, two stars. This just wasn't it. There's a huge subplot that is always brought up in this book that I thought would have a purpose and it didn't. Guys, it literally was talked about so much in this book for absolutely no reason. Then we have 56 Days, one star. It felt like it took me 56 days to read. Terrible. The Paris Apartment, which is another one star. I'm very picky, picky, picky about thrillers and this one was just not one that I liked at all. The House Across the Lake, four stars. Could not guess a plot twist. I feel like it was because it was a a little outlandish but not to the point where I was like oh yeah I don't like this I actually thought it was like a funny twist like I literally kind of laughed when the twist came out because I was like this is really out there but I enjoyed it. I really liked the vibe and I liked the feeling of this book, the eeriness that comes with it. Then we have Dead Flip. This isn't really a thriller, but I feel like it belonged in here. And this one was the three stars. Takes place in the 80s, which you guys know or may not know, but the 80s is my favorite era. The 80s and 90s, love it. And this is, takes place about a haunted pinball machine, close into friends, huge Stranger Things vibe. I also read The Midnight Club, which was a one star. Like I didn't like that book at all. I listened to the audiobook and it just like wasn't what I thought it was. Layla, one star, guess the plot twist without even reading the book. Also this book, I was like, why does this low key feel like cheating? And why is this making me feel weird? And then we have The Hunting Wives, another one star, I know. A lot of one stars. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. The main woman is insufferable to me. Those are all of the thrillers that I read this year. Now we're going to be talking about all of the fantasy books that I read this year. We have the Dance of Thieves duology. Loved them. Four stars, four and a half. I really, really loved this one. This one, I was not wanting to put the book down. This one was a little bit hard for me to get into, but I loved it after like the first 50 pages. This one I loved from start to finish. There is something that you know that the characters don't know, so you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. I love it. It was done magnificently. And then we have Bone Crier's Moon, one star. This book is not memorable for me at all. The City of Bones. This was a three star. I was actually really, really liking this book. And then the ending happened and I was like, why would you ever make that a plot twist? Heart of the Raven Prince, another three stars. This is a YA romance that I thought was cute. It's a Cinderella retelling and I really liked that. Throne of Glass, four stars. Oh, such a strong four stars. I cannot wait to read the rest of the series in February because I will be waiting to order the new cover. The last fantasy we have is House of Earth and Blood. This is a strong four stars for me as well. This honestly was the hardest time I've ever had getting into a fantasy world and really understanding it. But once I did, like the last 200 pages of this book, we're magnificent. I love the characters and I actually really love the storyline of this book and I can't wait to read House of Sky and Breath this month. Expect a little reading vlog reel over on my bookstagram. Follow my bookstagram, follow my personal Instagram. The final genre that we will be talking about today is romance. That is where all of these books come in. <laughs> Can we tell what my most read genre is? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to be talking about all of the Christmas books that I read because I just kind of want to get those out of the way because am I the only one that like after Christmas is over, I kind of don't want to talk about Christmas until like November? <laughs> yeah, I'm very hot and cold about that. All I Want for Christmas, two stars. This doesn't even really talk that much about Christmas and the couple I didn't like at all. Kiss the Season for Revenge, three stars. This book was so funny to me. Had a lot of drama in it, and I just, it was so entertaining. I had a fun time reading it. In a Holiday, it's by Christina Lauren, three stars. It kind of reminded me of Love in Other Words by them, which I really liked. Childhood Friends of Lovers, they have a past family cabin that they go to every year for Christmas. I loved the vibes of this book, a strong three. Love Light Farms, a strong four. You guys, I would actually recommend you guys to read this still in the winter time. It is like a Christmas book because she owns a Christmas tree farm, but it really doesn't talk too much about Christmas like at all. 
and I loved it. I loved the people in this. They've been friends for like 10 plus years and she's always had feelings for him. Loved it. Also another four stars baggage claim. I love this book so much. I love the guy in this book. And on my most recent Instagram picture, a lot of you guys were like, this is giving me baggage claim vibes. And I was like, I love that you guys know me so well. That's what I was going for. Now we're going to be talking about all of the dark romances that I read this year, which were not a lot. These are what I consider dark romances or were told to me to be dark romances. First of all, we have Still Beating. This is a two stars. I didn't really like this book. I feel like there was so much triggering content that I just kind of could not get into the romance. Then we have Vicious, a one star. This guy, there was nothing good about this guy. Here's my thing. I have a different scale for dark romances, by the way. I know because I have to throw all of my morals out the window. I have to throw my expectations for a regular romance book boyfriend out of the window with these. He was just terrible. There was not even a redeeming quality about him. He just seemed super obsessive and extremely toxic that I was like, girl, run. Just run as far as you can. And to her credit, she tried. <laughs> And then I read the first two books in the Brutal Birthright series. We have Brutal Prince, which I rated a four stars. This book was so funny to me. The main girl, girl boss queen, she was amazing. So the, some of the stuff that she does is just so hilarious. And I love their banter. Like sometimes the banter between couples and mafia romances just crack me up. Stolen Air, which was a three and a half. I also really enjoyed this one. And I can't wait to continue on with the rest of that series. And then we have King of Wrath by Anna Huang, which was a three stars. I did like this book. The only thing that didn't make it very strong for me was the fact that I feel like all of these tropes have been done so so many times and that they were done a lot better in other books but I still enjoyed reading this one and then we have Bound by Honor by Cora Riley which I rated a four stars the way this book ends I immediately went to Bound by Love which I also read this year and I rated a four stars because the drama in these books I was living for it Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas I think that this is the most hyped up book this or it ends with us because do you guys remember the trend that girls would do? Like they would bring this book to school and have their guy friends read it in class and like see their guy friends react to this book. Was that not, was that just on my free page? One star. This is psychotic. This is psychotic behavior in this book. Let me tell you, I would have gotten a restraining order faster than you can say restraining order. Okay, no. And then lastly, we have the infamous series by St. Abby. And I have changed this rating. When I first read this, I was like, uh, but on my dark romance scale, a strong three and a half. This is about a female serial killer who was on a path for revenge. She is like, I'm getting revenge on all of these people who have done me wrong, which they deserve it. Okay, guys, it's not just like somebody bumped into her on the street. Okay, we're not talking about that. We're talking about some like hardcore stuff. Go down, definitely look up trigger warnings because wow, the graphic descriptions of things that this woman does blew me away personally. I was like, there were a few times that I did one of these. Okay. There are so many plot twists to you and all of the books individually. I actually didn't read the bind up. I just bought the bind up. But all of the books end on like a plot twist or like a cliffhanger where you want to go into the other book. And I'm pretty sure all of the books are like under 90 pages or a little bit over 100 pages. So you can read them very fast. They're very easy reads too. They're so entertaining. I read all five books in the span of one night. Now we're going to be talking about just all of our regular romances. I read the first two books in the Hoop series. So we have Long Shot, which I read the three stars i would have rated this higher but there's a lot of triggering things that happened in this book that i did not know happened in this book that caught me very off guard and it just like made me a little bit on edge for the rest of the book and then we have block shot which i rated a two and a half stars i just didn't really like this couple because here's the thing that happened in this book that i hate when authors do when you introduce a character or have a character just for the dramatization for their relationship for the two characters to get together and there's absolutely zero wrong with that character and you're like wow this person's actually really nice but the author does them so dirty just for the betterment of the relationship that you're not even rooting for in the first place all of the mariana zapata books that i read this year the first one that i read was the wall of winnipeg and me a strong four i would say that i wouldn't recommend this book if you were trying to start into mariana zapata because this is one of her longer books and a long slow burn and the guy in this book isn't everyone's fave because his love language is a lot different from what most men are written like in books he's not very verbal with his his love. And then we have Wait For It, which is one of my favorite Mariana Zapata books. 
this is like a single aunt she has to take in her brother's kids so many cute scenes in this book and i just really really like this one and then we have from luke off with love in my top three mariana zapata book i would recommend this one if you were getting into mariana zapata from what i've read so far of her catalog because it is the shortest one i feel like there's a lot more i feel like you read a lot more scenes of the two characters like dialogue with each other and like interacting because there is like a forced proximity trope in this book and i really love the storyline the banter in this book was amazing and i really love the main girl all roads lead here this was a three star for me not because i didn't like it because i actually really liked it while i was reading it but i feel like it's one of her weaker books because i have not thought once about this book since i have finished it then we have culty which is a three stars because i didn't really like it this book just felt very repetitive the cycle was like goes to soccer practice is sore from soccer practice, argues with soccer coach, goes to soccer practice. Lastly, the most recent Mariana's Bada book that I read was Loon in the Lie, which is another four stars. I really like this one. I loved Rip. Let's rapid fire these, shall we? I think this was the last book that I read this year, which was Booked on a Feeling. Two stars. I was excited because this was like a childhood friends to lovers and I was disappointed. And then we have Magnolia Parks, which is another two stars. I did not know a lot about this book going into it. I just saw so many people start automatically talking about it. So of course, what else am I gonna do except read it? This is a romance and it's just the relationship is so toxic that I could never ever root for them. It's like the same thing with me and after. Like I've never liked the after books because I could never morally root for that relationship. <laughs> and then we have the Edens. So we have Indigo Ridge which I rated a two and a half stars because I cared more about the subplot of mystery than I did the romance. But then we have Juniper Hill which I rated a three and a half because I did like the relationship and I really liked the guy. And then we have The Godparent Trap which I rated a three stars. This book was really cute and I really liked it. One of my favorite reads of the year which was Icebreaker. I cannot wait for the rest of the series this was a four and a half my favorite hockey romance that i've ever read i loved this guy he is a golden retriever sunshine boy he is one of those characters that are like i don't want this person to be mad at me hey oh my god and the communication in this book the best communication i've ever seen in a book the guy is just one of those that are like oh is there a problem let me help you or like let's talk through this or why are you mad at me are you mad at me like that type i really loved it and then we have the book that i forgot i read like in the month i think i read this in october and i forgot to put it in my wrap up because i forgot that i even read this book but i do remember some things and it was a two star i didn't really like the girl in this book i reread it ends with us this year because it starts with us was coming out which we will talk about here in a moment and i just wanted to make a reading vlog that way people could just watch that instead of rereading this book and then we have the confidence of wildflowers duet this was a two star this was a one there's something that happens at the end of this book which is just strictly for shock value doesn't even belong in the book honestly like it was so out of nowhere things were going fine for the couple and then all of a sudden boom this like truck <laughs> not like actually a truck but just like imagine if i'm talking to you right now and someone just came and punched me in the face shock value for no reason so then i had to suffer through this book because i had bought both of these books at the same time and i was like i already bought it so i might as well read it this one was a one star speaking of one stars i have two more for you we have dream on this is a one star because we spend this whole entire book building something up and then for the last like 20 pages all of that comes crumbling down and then you're supposed to like completely just care about something else in nine days, one star, I would rate this a zero if I could because the depiction of mental health in this book and how mental health is dealt with, and mental health is the extreme central point of this book, just felt so triggering. It just felt so crappy the way that this was dealt with. The writing was terrible as well. So many spelling and grammatical errors. It was very, very frustrating to somebody who suffers with the things talked about in this book very very triggering but now we have always only you which i loved i give this a four stars one of my favorite sports romances of the year i love the representation in this book and this guy was so so sweet then we have good girl complex which is one star this is l kennedy's version of after then we have most of all you which is another one star <laughs> i'm sorry there are so many one stars in a row you guys are probably like wow destiny i know you gotta be honest this book cringed me out so bad god i just realized this is another one star this is a romance with her stepbrother and that dude is a literal jerk so irredeemable things we know by heart which i rated a three star if you guys want a book that's sad but has happy moments and is a mainly happy book with some sad undertones to it i would really recommend this one to you i feel like it's a sweet book with some sad moments in it but not destroy your soul i have some other ones that will destroy your soul if you want them Alex, approximately three stars i read this on the plane to california so the fact that this took place in california i loved i just remember loving the setting and the warm feeling in my chest 
obsessed when I read this book. Love on the brain, a strong four stars. Guys, listen, I know she was wearing galaxy leggings, but you act like you haven't read a book before that you saw the outfit description and were like, you guess what I do? I just imagine they're wearing something different. It's not that big of a deal. You wanna know what it never was? that series. Archer's voice by Mia Sheridan, a four and a half stars. I fell into the hype with this one and really liked it. Before we were strangers, this one is a three stars. This has a past and present POV, takes place more in the past, and I really liked it. The past takes place in 90s New York, like has my name written all over it, okay? The present just felt extremely forced, and I didn't like that. The Summer of Broken Rules. This is such a cute book. This is a easy four stars for me. It is so sweet. Has some Taylor Swift references. Has a friend reference. That means everything to me because it's one of my favorite parts of the show that they talk about in this book. The guy, the setting, everything about this book was so sweet. Daryl A for Aunties, a three star. If you guys want a rom-com that is mostly a comedy, check this one out. It's so cute and so funny. And there were so many moments that you were like, oh my god, what is about to happen? And then we have one of my most disappointing reads of the year, which was The Spanish Love Deception. This is another book that TikTok birthed out of hype like you know imagine like the TikTok hype is just like birthing this book out sorry for that actually I'm sorry for that description <laughs> don't know where that came from this book was a two stars I was about to say one did you guys catch that but then I was like eh, there were some redeemable moments I didn't feel a lot of chemistry between the two characters and like Aaron Blackford's good and all but like there are so many other book boyfriends that are a lot better she she this is a easy four stars as well another just cute fast easy read it's a friends to lovers and you guys know that's like my favorite trope reminders of him by Colleen Hoover this was a another easy four star I think this was the most disappointing read of the year genuinely it starts with us which i have actually since lowered down to a one and a half stars i did not enjoy this book at all and i had to be honest with myself because there was a lot of hype surrounding this book which also can i just say can i be so honest this 110 percent felt like a money grab before i read it and then even more after i read it there was no reason for this book to exist i feel like the way it ends with us ended was completely fine the storyline of this book the stuff that was added in i was like yeah this just feels like a money grab to me obviously hey we all bought into it I'm unfortunately. Then I read Fixer Up by Tessa Bailey. This was another two stars just because it really wasn't memorable at all. Funny you should ask, which I rated a three stars. I rated this higher originally. It has since moved down the scale. I like the little, um, what are they called? What are they called? Like the little, um, articles i like the articles that you get but i didn't like the romance 10 rules for faking it this was a one and a half stars i literally this book was not memorable at all here's for one by ella mace this book is super cute it is one of the few marriage of convenience that i've read and i actually really really liked it i feel like the guy was super cute and i really liked the little coffee shop and everything that we read about in this book lila this is a famous Wattpad book and I decided to give it a read because I was like, okay, I saw a lot of people talk about it on TikTok. Oh my god, listen to me. And I picked it up. This was a two stars. You can definitely tell that this was a Wattpad book. The writing and the tropes in this book are very much Wattpad in the way that like you guys know if you had your Wattpad phase, there were those books where they just started pulling tropes out of nowhere. It was just like a hat full of tropes and they just started like grabbing by handfuls and just throwing them all in there. One of my favorite reads of the year, however, was Darling Venom. I appreciate a book that depicts mental health in a way that I can appreciate and this was one of those books and also I liked the romance and I liked another little subplot that they had and the like whole entire meaning of Darling Venom. Alone with you in the ether this is a three stars. I again liked the representation of different forms of mental health. Having a relationship with a person who has those things that do with their mental health and I liked that and I liked reading the story and the writing was absolutely exquisite. I thought that it was amazing but I felt dumb. Pack Up the Moon. This is one of those books that earlier when I was like if you want to shatter your soul read it. This is one of those. Talks heavily about grief, the process of grief, the realities of grief and losing someone that you love. Tell me three things. Um, I couldn't even tell you three things about this book. Another book that if you want to just break your own heart go for it we have bright side by kim holden this was a four stars i really liked this book and then sobbed at the end because you know authors love to do that to me final stack guys we have consider me which is another hockey romance one of my favorite hockey romances that i've ever read this was a strong four stars in this book i feel like you get a lot of the couple in just their every day-to-day -day lives and being together which i really love yet another book if you want to absolutely shatter your heart into a million pieces and just stare at the wall and then listen to the night we met repeatedly on loop for the rest of the week <laughs> 
Maybe that was just me. If he had been with me, strong four and a half stars. The author has since announced that she is going to be releasing the guy's point of view from this book. And I don't know if I can do that. Things We Never Got Over, a strong four and a half stars. I really love this book. I can't wait for Things We Hide From The Light. It is my favorite grumpy sunshine and favorite small town romance. A Million Kisses In Your Lifetime, where people talk about Magnolia Parks being gossip girl vibe. This one is way better if you want those gossip girl vibes and that relationship vibe. Bren is giving me very much Serena vibes this is another one where the guy's kind of a grumpy guy and he turns into a simp and i love it lotus two stars the dead romantics i think that this is the perfect fall romance perfect addiction this is yet another wattpad book that i decided to reread to see if i liked it's also becoming a movie or a tv show this was a three stars rereading it i was like yeah i can tell that I was a lot younger when I liked this, but I still thought it was good. And then we have The Kiss Curse, which I rated a four stars. Guys, this fall, specifically in October, please read The X-Hex and The Kiss Curse because these are great. They're witches. It's super cute, and I love the banter and the storylines of these books. My Killer Vacation, one of my more disappointing reads of the year, two stars. The Bodyguard, this was another four stars for me. So cute. It's like reverse where she's the bodyguard. He's the guy that she has to protect, and she takes her job very seriously. She loves her job, and she's a strong woman and we love that we love to see it the infinity between us another one that i was a little bit disappointed by like this doesn't have a lot of hype but it was a childhood friends to lovers i guess the reason that they haven't talked in some years but i really didn't think it was worth all that and also i didn't grow attached to their relationship at all love and gelato three stars this is a really cute summer read if you need some the romance in this book is kind of like forced upon you at the end like there's not really i don't feel that there's really a build-up to the romance that sprouts in this book. Next we have Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This was a three star for me. The reason this was a three star is because the reveal was completely irredeemable for me. This felt way, way, way too summer to love in other words in the summer it turned pretty for me. Book Lovers by Emily Henry. A strong four and a half stars. Thank you so much to Emily Henry. Let's just all give Emily Henry a quick applause for introducing us to Charlie Lastra and the banter between the two. We also love a guy character that has amazing banter and will let the woman be a strong, independent woman that she is. She is a career boss babe and he lets her be her and we love that. <sighs> Guys, we only have a few more books. Hook, Line, and Sinker. This was a three stars. It was just a nice read. I also read this on the airplane ride home and it was a nice pass of time. Then we have Dear Ava. This was a two star. I remember this people saying that this was like a secret admirer. Guys, there's like very little to do with the secret admirer in this book. So I was a little confused. Better than the movies, a strong four and a half. One of my favorites of the year because I am a sucker for rom-coms. I absolutely love rom-coms. The main character in this book also loves rom-com. There's like a little rom-com quote at the beginning of every single chapter. I loved the guy and the girl in this book and I loved their banter. Oh, here's Forever Interrupted by Hilary Jenkins Reid. This was a two star. It started off good, but then it fell off very quickly for me. Until Friday night, one and a half. This was very Wattpad-esque writing and I cringed a lot reading it. Lastly, we have Bittersweet Memories. This is a strong four star for me. I really like this book. That was me. That was me talking about all of these books. I hope you guys enjoyed. You guys can tell me down below what your favorite read of the year, disappointing reads, your reading goals are for 2023, anything you really want. Comment it, whatever you want. I will read it. Happy 2023, everybody. Here, actually, what do you think? <clears throat> Here is to a new year of reading, a new year of new opportunities, new books, new five-star reads. We can all cheers to that. Clink. That is it for me from today's video, everybody. Say hi, Charlie. You guys didn't get a Charlie cameo today. Here that is. Here that is. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you for watching today's video. I love you guys so, so, so much, and I'll see you guys when I see ya. Peace.